Matthew chapter 12. 12 being the number of Israel. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day. That would be the seventh day. First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day. Never called Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Never. It's not the Sunday, it's not the first day. Sabbath is the seventh day. It's Jewish. Through the corn. That's wheat. That's not corn as an American corn. American corn was not introduced to the Europeans or anybody on the other on the old the old world until when they came over here the Native Americans introduced it. And it's okay. It's no thing you have to change your whole Bible for. <clears throat> I mean, you do get when you Americanize the Bible, then you got a problem. And his disciples. So evidently now. The disciples were sent out, now they're back together. Were hungered, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. So, you can eat corn. I mean, even if it wasn't American corn, you can eat it raw. People do eat it raw. I wouldn't. But, but when the Pharisees saw, okay, now we're in trouble. They said to him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day. Well, my question is always bad. When they charge Jesus doing something on the Sabbath day, what are you guys doing there? Because evidently they're in a field. Or they're in a marketplace and they, they grab wheat. But they're always looking for something wrong. Now, we need to pay attention because Matthew 12 is now a big turning point. We are, it's, it's a Jewish book, but I don't want to say transition, but things are, things are now changed and changing. So what do you guys, what is your disciples doing on the Sabbath day? But he, Jesus, said to him, Have you not read? That's a kick in the gut. Ask that question in your Baptist church. I am amazed in a typical King James Bible believing Baptist church on how much they have not read in the Bible. And the same tactics put on Jesus to the third. Have you not read what David, you figured they would know about David. He's the king. Jewish book, king. Jesus is king of kings. We're going back to the scriptures. Jesus is validating David as a man and the story that we're about to reference in the Bible. When he was hungered, David and his men, and they that were with him, his men, how he entered the house of God, the temple, and did eat the showbread. There were 12 loaves of bread. It was the Sabbath day. And how you get the Sabbath day from what David is, when you read David going into the temple, and then you go into Exodus, and you read about the showbread, it says in the law that that bread was to be put out on the Sabbath day. Fresh. I believe it was Abiathar. I could be wrong about that. But Abiathar has got the loaves in his, in his hands. He has put the fresh bread out. He's got the old week, last week's showbread. David shows up. which was not lawful for him, David, or his men to eat. 
neither for them which were with him, his military, his army, but only for the priest. The showbread was only for the priest. David comes in and asks for the bread for his men. All right, what's the whole context here if you don't study your Bible? David is on the run from King Saul. Present. He doesn't even have time to grab his, his sword. Micah has just lied to protect him. He runs to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. The temple. You got any food for me? Yes. Oh, give it to me. I, it, it's it's not for you. It's for the it's for the priest. Uh, are you clean? And it's funny because David says he and his men had been forbear. For they haven't been with any women or their wives. <laughs> I don't know why David would say that, but and he gives them the bread on the Sabbath day. Bread is not there. David is one of them men, he's a king, he's a prophet, and he's a priest. Jesus says to the Pharisee, did you not read? Not only did you not read a Bible verse that has not been written yet and studied. How come God allowed David to break the Sabbath? While he's on the run, being chased by Saul. What's the context? David, a prophet, priest, and king. David was anointed king. He, was, he just didn't have the kingdom yet. Jesus is anointed king. He doesn't have his kingdom yet. David is being chased for murder by Saul. Jesus is being chased by the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the tribes for murder. You'll see in a moment. They want him dead. Or have you not read and studied in the law, Moses? When we read David, that's in the prophets. Samuel. All right, how about Moses? Moses and Elijah. How that on the Sabbath days, seventh day, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. The priest is bringing in and baking the bread on the Sabbath to put on the table. That violates the scriptures. Well, it doesn't violate the scriptures, it violates the Sabbath, but it was allowed by God. But I say unto you, in this place, the field, he's not in, he's not in the temple as your Baptist would want him to be. He's in the field where there, there's corn and they're picking the corn and rubbing it between their fingers and eating. Here in the field of wheat is one greater than the temple. That's the building. That's God who is Jesus. Jesus is God. And Jesus said, I am better than that building. Tell that to your Baptist congregation. Because every time you visit a church, they want to show you the building. The Christians, would you uh, you won't believe but our church building? We have a coffee house. We have great bathrooms. We have fourteen Sunday school classrooms. We have a waiting room. We have a a steeple. We've got stained glass windows. And I can't believe I, I heard. Dr. Rucker would say, because he traveled all over, 
And the first thing they want to do is they want you to see their shirt. He's like, the first thing I want to do is I want to go to the hotel. I want to get everything. And I just want to sit down and lay down after a big, long flight. When we came into Florida the first time, and it's like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, the pastor of the church picked us up, and we had to go at 4 o'clock in the morning to the church storefront. Oh, never seen a storefront before. Oh, that's a pulpit? Wow, and you got a piano over here too. Can we go to the hotel room so I can go get some sleep? See our building? One pastor, you know, we're not a church building unless we have a steeple. Another one, well, you know, the pastor's wife, she, every week she goes out there and washes the windows. Jesus said, put this on the walls of your church. There is in this place one greater than the temple. There's no temple. There's no building. We are the temple. We are the... And Jesus says, I'm better than that. And the lad to see in church age, if you want to go scripture with scripture, as far as the only place that the Bible speaks about the church as being a building, he's at the door outside knocking. But if you had known what this means, you're chasing me down, they chase David down. It was on the Sabbath, David did it on the Sabbath. You baked the bread on the Sabbath. What's the problem? We're going to go to some more illustrations. I, I, it'd be like, well, what are you guys doing? Aren't you breaking the Sabbath, walking with us, watching us, condemning us? Isn't that like a Sabbath breaking? <laughs> but, if you had known what this means, the scriptures, I will have mercy, not sacrifice. Oh, you know, bring, bring the goat, bring the cup, bring the pigeons, pay for the pigeons, pay for the, you know, all the tables. You got to have this amount of, of of wine for the offer. You got to have this amount of offer. and he's like mercy. What about mercy? What about the man that was blind and Jesus healed, and you end up kicking him out of the temple? What about the man? What about the woman that was for twelve years hunched over? unable to strengthen herself, and you're mad because I healed her on the Sabbath. How about... What, what, what is an implication by Jesus over and over? Where is your mercy? Now, when you see the Pharisees or the scribes, when Jesus heals somebody, including the... the uh, calling the devils out. Not one time are the Pharisees or Sadducees pleased. Not a hallelujah, amen, glory to God. They will find something wrong. You're not happy that somebody's been relieved of their... It would be like if you were over here and we got a hospital right next to us. And... Let's say you were involved in a, in a major automobile accident. Pain. And let's say you're about to be released from the hospital and everything, all the pain is gone and the only thing left is this scar. The Pharisees would be at the door. Not, hey, wow, great. Glad you're feeling better. They'd be like, you didn't pay your bill. You didn't thank the doctor. You you didn't you thank that nurse, but you didn't thank that nurse. You had 
this chaplain come, but you didn't have one of our chaplains come and see you. For the Son of Man, that's Jesus, is Lord, capital L, that's God, even of the Sabbath day. Now, verse 6, he's greater than the temple, the building. He is God, the Son of God, even on the Sabbath day. Now, we have another hospital here by the seven day event. And I would tease them. When I was, the times I've been it, it'd be the Sabbath Saturday. I'd be, well, what are you guys doing working? Now, I was out of context because, but your seven day event is believe you know, they are under the law and Sabbath. And that opened up a door to explain a lot of things to the nurses and doctors about the Sabbath. You see, the seven-day event is, oh, they're Sabbath keepers. Real, in reality, they're not. If a man, they caught a man gathering sticks when Moses was alive, and they end up stoning him, starting sticks and making a fire, your spark plug makes a fire in your car. When you turn the ignition, If they go home and turn the dial on the oven, that starts a fire. And then they turn around and call us Satan because we meet on Sunday. And when he departed thence, he went into their synagogue, not God's. Now, the synagogue is the individual, now get that, meeting places of the Jews. We would call it a church. And Jesus said, the Holy Spirit said, God said, he went into their synagogue, not ours. You know, people get their church, their church. Oh, yeah, it may be your church. It may not be God's church. Regardless what you think, you may not have the Holy Spirit. Listen, if, if there's if there's by chance if there's nobody in your church that's saved, you don't have the Holy Spirit. And it's not wood, windows, doors, nails, steeples, it's the people. And if you got people who are saved, the body of Christ, in the building, and they're not doing nothing, they rather give sacrifice than mercy. And if they're wicked and they put money in the plate, Proverbs says it's an abomination. That ain't God's place. There are underground churches. There have been meeting places of the great revival in America with the preacher standing on a rock in a field as Jesus was just. You know, the great awakening would be uh, the great preachers in Whitfield would come along down the road and there's a bunch of field hands in, in New England Whatever they're picking, whatever. He would go up to what seemed to be the boss or a landowner. Say, I don't want to interrupt your people working, but that, can I go stand on that rock over there? And can I preach to your people while they're working? Go for it. They wouldn't be sitting down in pews. They'd be working. On a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever day he was passing through. Imagine, in New England, we have places called the Green. And it's an area set up, it's got a couple trees, 
It's green of grass. Pretty much, it's pretty much, you know, there's no swing sets or anything. It's just ground. You would have picnics on it. The Salvation Army would, would bring in their band and they would play hymns. Preachers would come to the green and with all the activity, sometimes they would have their, their farmer's market and stuff like that there. They would have their Founders Day or something like that. And they would stand under green on a rock or whatever it's there. And they would preach to the people. They would have revivals on the green. Oh, for sure down here below the Bible Belt. I don't see anything like that. It's not the building. It's the people. And there is no church where there's no salvation of that soul. You can have a building full of unsaved people. That ain't the church. I don't care what you say. So when he went into their synagogue, and the word synagogue comes while they were in the Babylonian captivity. Babylonia. When they were in Babylonia and their captivity, the Jews had a meeting house. They would call it synagogue. Behold, there was a man which had his hand withered and all scrunched up. Couldn't use it. It could be uh, arthritis. It could have been an injury. And they asked him. And I watched the question. Is it lawful for him to heal on the Sabbath day? That they might accuse him. Okay, I know who asked the question. The rabbis, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, and the holy rollers. And it looks like to me they brought this man to Jesus. Hey, is it okay to heal him? It's a Sabbath. And what they're trying to do is they're trying, they have started now to start to frame Jesus. One of the things they will do in another gospel is they will bring a woman caught in adultery. Why did they do that? Because they want to catch him. Another time, I don't know if Matthew talks about the tax collector, they will come up to Jesus. Is it okay to pay taxes or not? Well, if he said no, he's in trouble with the government. If he said yes, the people would be mad at him. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to trick Jesus so they can bring it to a kangaroo court and accuse him. This is where they lack the mercy. If they brought this man with the withered hand, don't know if he was there, don't know if Jesus came up to him, don't know if they brought this man to Jesus. If they brought the man, it's not, hey, listen, Jesus can heal. Can you heal this man and make him better? Now, let's see you do something, Jesus, so we can bring you to court. This kind of thing happens in churches. They will try to get you to do something to get you in trouble. One of the number one things is don't ever sign a pledge. Ever. Because there have been Christians who left the church, uh, disassociated, disassociated themselves with, the, with that church, went to another church, doesn't go to another church, moved to half of, you know, whatever it is. I don't belong to your church no more. And they have taken that, that member, that, that past member, they have taken those family, that person, to court and say, look, they signed this pledge, they owe us money. Well, we don't belong. I don't care you don't belong to us anymore. You pledged. Mercy would be, okay, you don't want to be part of us, we don't want to be part of you, goodbye. Sacrifice, you owe us money.
No church would do that. No. And he said unto him, What man, any man, shall there be among you, okay, Pharisees or Sadducees? What religious man of you guys shall have one sheep, Israel, talking to Jews, Jewish people, no Gentiles, that's important. Now, you see the, 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 the 99 and 1? The John? Matthew has nothing to do with Gentiles. And if it, the sheep, fall into a pit on the Sabbath day. The sheep's out there. Da, 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 do, 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 do. Seventh day. Ah, I'm in a pit. Will he, the man, lay hold on it, the sheep, to lift it up? It's the Sabbath day. Will you do work to bring that sheep out of the pit? Oh, okay. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Sheep. <laughs> but let's say the pit was filled with mire or gunk or something that would be harmful to you can't do it. It's a Sabbath day. Well, that sheep is worth money. It's worth trading. It's get wool. It could make other sheep or it could be food. How much then is a man better than a sheep? Go tell that to PETA. Oh, to save the whales but kill the babies. Jesus said save the babies. You are in serious desire of abomination of God that you will go to jail and suffer longer because you were involved in killing a dog or cat, cockfighting, illegal, uh, uh, whatever with, with an animal, rather killing a baby. You say, what are you talking about? Well, there are sports personality. They're in jail because it, whatever legal they did with their pets. And they get a harsher crime than somebody who's taking the life of somebody else. Oh, go out and kill somebody. Okay, well, we'll file a case. And, but man, go out and kill a dog. Leave a bunch of kittens in a box inside a road. That makes front page news today. Leave your dog out all night and somehow it gets killed by that, whatever it is. And you go to jail. Give me the list of names of the doctors and nurses who have aborted babies that are in jail today for their crime. See, I ain't. I'm for preaching the gospel only on the street, but abortion is murder. And you're going to get people going to say, well, my neighbor, he, he, he shot my dog with a shotgun. Yeah, but the more valuable is that you gave up that baby in the abortion. That baby's in heaven over there going to testify with you. Dogs don't go to heaven. Cats don't go to heaven. Whales don't go to heaven. Wherefore is it lawful to do well on the Sabbath day 
as I said, with that hospital. Is the hospital going to shut everything down because it's a Sabbath? You got patients lying in bed, and the oxygen, we can't change your oxygen because it's a Sabbath. Are you going to, like, you got your loved ones semi taken care of in, in a nursing home? And they die on the Sabbath day. Well, why do they die? Well, we don't have no staff on Sabbath. I mean, this place is run by a Jewish person. And no, no Sabbath. No, no, no one's there. Jesus said, isn't it? Life or death? You gotta wonder too when, when in the in the Gospel of Luke that that man that was caught by the by the robbers and left for de dead that the the priest and the Levite. Sometimes you wonder if you got to add to that story that they didn't want to take. Was it a Sabbath day? <laughs> Even if it was a Sabbath day, put that guy on your mule, give him some oil. Treat the wounds, bring them to the end, get try to get some fluids on it, even it is the Sabbath day. Because you may, well, you know, that shall not work on the sixth day, on the seventh day, honor thy Sabbath and all that. But if you don't take care of that person and he dies, well, you just committed thou shall not kill. In other words, as far as the Sabbath, even under the law, God, Jesus, acknowledged there's some cases, you know what? You got to do. And what if you do if you didn't do? Now, did he condemn them for taking the sheep out of it? No, he says, but that man with the withered hand Then you what? Then said he, Jesus, to the man. Stretch forth thy hand. Impossible. It's withered. And there's going to be times and things in your life. You're going to say, God, that's impossible. And God's going to say, yep, stretch forward your hand. What? You want to repeat that? I can't do that. I don't have the money for that. I don't have the resources for that. I'm unable to do that. That's impossible. Stretch forth your hand. It's showing you it's not the man, it's not the physicians, it's not the Pharisees, not the Sadducees, and the whole crew, not the rabbi, and he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. It's Jesus. Plain and simple. When you keep telling God, I can't open my mouth, I can't give him a gospel draft, and then when you have done, and you will do what you're doing, after that you'll be like, wow, I didn't know I knew that. No, you did not know that. The Holy Spirit knew that, but since you are faithful in reading and studying the scriptures and, and listening to the word of God, the Holy Spirit used you. The fact is that God will ask you to do something you cannot do. It's scripture. Well, what about Paul? Paul, get up and go preach that gospel. Uh, Jesus, I'm dead on this pile of rocks. Get up and go preach the gospel. Jesus, I was in heaven. I want to... 
get up and preach the gospel. And Jesus, uh, Jesus. Paul got up, wiped the dust off him, and they're like, what? what? He's doing. Okay? The Apostle John's put into boiling liquid. Put on the, the island of Patmos to rot away and die. All right, John, get that pen and pencil, start writing. You would think that it would be kind of painful to start writing. Then the Pharisees, oh boy, remember Paul was a Pharisee, held a council against him. Paul would probably been there. That they might destroy him, not kill him, not bend him, destroy him. Get that strong and underline that word destroy. That's how furious they was with him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence. He left the synagogue. And great multitudes followed. Oh, I bet that was great. The synagogue emptied out. And he healed them all. I have upset churches and left. No one's followed. And then been that just, oh, you know the Bible, and you know a lot of things. Oh, man, you, you teach quite well. And I left, and they stayed. And charged them they should not make him known. No, he doesn't want to advertise where he is. He doesn't want the Pharisees on his case. That's what it is. In the Gospel of John, it'd be like, what was it to say something? And his time was not up or something like that. His time has not come. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah. He says, Greek. Hey, there's a Greek you can know. Isaiah. Hebrew. Isaiah. Ha <laughs> ha. Hebrew and Greek. The prophet saying, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, Jesus, my beloved, Jesus, in whom my soul, God, is well pleased. Doesn't say I'm proud of him. Does it? I'm just proud of my boy. I am proud of Jesus. No, he's not. God says, well pleased. Don't you start putting the words proud and pride. I'm proud of my church. As a pastor, I'm proud of my family. That's a sin. I will put my spirit, Holy Spirit, upon him. He shall judge, he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Uh oh. I'll show you in a moment. He shall not strive, he's not going to fight, he's not going to cry, he's not going to yell, he's not going to cry foul. That doesn't mean boo-hoo. He's not going to lift up his voice. Neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. He's done street preaching. Jesus is about done with the Jews. Later on, Paul will get to this point. Later on, he's going to wipe the dust off and say, right, you know what? Your sins be upon you. I'm going to the Gentiles. A bruised reed, that's a, a, a leaf reed, shall he not break? So in other words, he can go walking through reeds. It's an illustration. And no, he's, they're going to just move, but they're not going to break. You're not going to be able to go in the... Well, well, you know, he walked over here. You see the broken reed? Just, no, that ain't... A smoky flax shall he not quench. And what it is, it, here's his flax. It's on, it's on fire, like an incense stick. It's going to still burn. He's not going to put it out. Till... All right. It's not forever... Till 
he sent for judgment unto victory, the second advent. All right, here we go. Drop the hammer now. And, the, and his name shall the Gentiles trust. Why? Look at verse 14. And the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him how they might destroy him. They had rejected Jesus. And Jesus said, okay, I'm done with you. I'll go to Calvary. I will do the Father's... Now, in the garden, he says to the Father, I will do thy will. They want me dead. In a moment after the third prayer, when I try to wake those disciples up, Judas is going to come with an entire band of soldiers from the priest. Now, we've got 16 chapters left, but... As far as the attitude of the Jew to Jesus, what can we do to get rid of him? Now, you say, why didn't Jesus go? Why didn't he leave? Why didn't he go start going to the cross? Because that cross was a date and a time by the scriptures. Even Jesus himself couldn't bring that cross any earlier. And if it wasn't for the scriptures, there might have been a there might have been a probability that Jesus said to the, would say to the Father, now, there was no scripture, no prophecy. Father, and Jesus said this. Bring the legion of angels. Call me home. Get those angels ready. Get the swords ready. Get their horses ready. Go at it. And you know, he would not have broken the covenant with Noah. Because he told Noah, no longer, he, he told Noah, no longer will I curse the ground. No longer will I send floods of water. To destroy all flesh. That's why we got little floods. Not, not big floods. If Jesus, if it wasn't for prophecy, if it wasn't for the word of God, and there was, Jesus could call the angels down and say, destroy all, maybe save one or two like he did with Noah. Maybe. But God said, The law had already been written. Moses has already been written. The prophets have already been written. The, the law and prophets that they rejected. Now he is showing them. Jesus right now is, okay, this is the date and time for the cross. Let's just keep on going. Don't advertise myself. Don't go out there and act like an idiot. Don't go purposely out there to get myself in trouble. That's what he's saying. There are Christians out there. Well, you know, you, you don't belong here. Oh, you better watch me. I know a church. They were told that spot is private property. Don't come here. They went back there. We told you, it's private property. We'll arrest you. Well, you're not going to tell us. They went there. They were arrested. <coughs> <coughs> however, the, <coughs> however, it worked out. I don't know if they went to court. I don't know those details. But where they were was private property. You don't belong there. I know them street preachers. They've gone to a location. It was like a fair with grounds, place was fenced in, they went in, they paid their fee, their ticket, went in there, and they said, listen, here's your money back, leave, and don't come back, here. Well, they went and talked to whoever they talked to, that ground, though it was public property, was legally to be rented 
And they had a legal right to say, no, don't come back. I mean, they went to the sidewalk. Had they gone through those gates and, and been arrested, that would have been, Jesus didn't do that. And it's not that Jesus is running scared. But the power that man has. Listen, God said about the Tower of Babel, man, if man will set his mind to do it, he's going to do it. We got to go down there and change their language. We got to go down there and confront them. If these men were so irate, they would have done anything possible to have Jesus arrested and killed before the time. But God said, no. You say, can a man change God's plan? I'm going to give maybe one or two illustrations and we're done. I believe that God has a set date for our life. Whatever it is. There's a month, there's a day, and a year that God has, you're going to die. Or rapture. The doctors and the government says on a cigarette pack, the Surgeon General warning is, if you continue to smoke this stupid junk, you can get a cancer, you can get emphysema, you can get COPD, you can get something that will end your life. And it, they, they record it. They have found that it will take life off of you. In time. And you can get to heaven and God says, listen, you should have been here five years from now. Well, why? Well, not that you're going to do it again, but next time you cross the road, look both ways before the bus comes, smacks and runs you over. You're in heaven because you're an idiot. You're a saved idiot. You didn't look both ways. Well, you know, they say I don't have to look both ways. And, yeah, it's doing you a lot of good right now, isn't it? Your body right now is being buried in that ground. Your mama misses you. Your family misses you. Because you have the right to not look both ways. Oh, yeah, they're going to sue the bus company. That don't bring you back, does it? And let me sit and tell you. Let me tell you what the five years would have, would have been done for you. That'd be the worst part. Can you imagine taking a gun, blowing your brains out, and have God say, Who'd you do that for? Speaking tongues before God. Oh, okay. I mean, you went through more pain than I did on the cross. That's what you're saying? So what's going to happen? Well, in four minutes and 30 seconds, the rapture is going to happen. Well, you know, if you didn't smoke those cigarettes, I was going to answer that prayer you wanted. But you needed oxygen. You need, you you want to have another cigarette. And you want to blow your lungs away. And yeah. yeah, it was yes, no, not now. I said not now. But here you are, and here that prayer is in can't be answered. You can end your life before God's plan to end your life. It's your choice, free will. But he warns you. It's You know, the most funny thing is that if you die of lung cancer from smoking, I'm not talking about secondhand smoke, I'm talking about you smoke and you die from smoking. I can imagine God calling the unsaved attorney general. Excuse me, sir. Me, before I throw you in the lake of fire, will you tell my, my bride here what you said about smoking cigarettes? Gabriel, you want to bring every pack of cigarettes that he bought 
and flip it over to read to him the Surgeon General's warning. Never mind the pages of the Bible that God will open up to tell you. That's how it is. 